go to Universal Studios Hollywood, I said. Go see Super Nintendo World, I said. It's going to rain, they said. I can describe our trip to Super Nintendo World in one word. Rain, rain, and more rain. Now, I knew it was going to rain. I looked at the weather, and but I thought maybe it would just be a drizzle. I thought, hey, this is California. I don't think it rains that much in California, right? I was hoping for a drizzle, but instead we got a monsoon. Needless to say, things did not go as planned. We had early access to Super Nintendo World, but we spent most of that hour trying to get our power up bands to work. Plus Mario Kart Bowser's challenge was having technical difficulties throughout the entire early access morning, but they did get it back and running soon after that hour was up. And of course we had the rain that did not stop all day. What started out as a drizzle just kept getting worse throughout the day until there was a warning for a flood. Needless to say, it wasn't the best way to experience Super Nintendo World. We were wet and cold, but we still managed to have fun and we stuck it out the entire day. to the power-up band issue. We purchased our power-up bands the day before at in CityWalk at the Super Nintendo World store. See, I wanted to get it done beforehand so that we had the max amount of time to do all the challenges and ride the cart since we had early access. However, we had problems connecting the power-up bands to the app. Tim got his added first and then he went to try and add mine to his phone because you can, you can put more than one on a single phone. So after he tried that, the person complained about the name that I needed to change it so I changed it. Then it started complaining about there was a problem with the app and I should try back later. And then where the names were for the, the two power up bands. Now there was a blank spot. It had no name and the app wasn't even connecting properly. So I tried to connect my power up band to my phone, but that didn't work either. It was complaining about how I had an error and that I needed to try again later. And I did keep trying, but it still didn't work. So that morning we went to Super Nintendo World and we found a team member to help us. They went to go look for a manager. He came and he said maybe he, could, he he said he had never seen this issue before. And so it was kind of weird that we were having this issue, but he took it and decided to try and do a factory reset to see if that would help. We're waiting to see if our power up bands, if we can get them to work because we've had trouble this entire morning and last night when we bought them. But he came back and said that because the bands had never been used, he couldn't really do a factory reset. So we ended up getting new bands and I connected them to my phone and they had no problem. It all worked. So we were able to go and play in the land. However, by that time, there was only 15 minutes left of our early access time. That's when we found out that Mario Kart Brothers Challenge wasn't even working, but we got through all the key challenges before the hour was up and that's because all the lines were short. So even though we didn't experience the entire hour, I do think that early access is worth it. The lines were shorter. It was a breeze to get through all the challenges. And if the ride had been working, we would have had plenty of time to do that and the key challenges and to walk around the land. I could definitely tell there was less people in the land because later on, once early access was up, there was much more there was a flood of people that started to come in and I do think early access is worth it. The lines for the key challenges were much shorter and there was less people in the land. If we did want to eat at Toadstool Cafe, we could go and do that 
and there was no wait. Um, but we decided to wait till later to eat at Toadstool Cafe. I definitely could tell when the hour was up for early access because the amount of people that started to come in was a lot. Once Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge was operational, we decided to get in line but realized the line was really long. Uh, there was a couple hour wait. I can't remember the exact time, but it was definitely a couple hours to wait and the single rider line was short, so we decided to do that. And it's the first time I've ever used single rider in line because we've always had our kids with us. This is our first trip that we've ever taken without the kids. In the single rider line, we waited probably about 20 minutes. I think they may have still been having technical difficulties because the line wasn't moving. The only problem with single rider is that you don't get to see the queue. And you definitely want to see the queue because it's very colorful. There's tons of detail in there and you have to check it out. I think it is a must. That's why the next day when we got there early, we decided to go through the normal line so that we could see the queue. And the line was much shorter. I think it was a 40 minute wait. I don't even know if we waited that long though. It probably felt more like 30 minutes. I rode Mario Kart three times while we were there and my score improved each time. So if your first experience is less than stellar, you should give it another go. I love the ride and it was so fun, very repeatable. I could ride it over and over again. Plus it was so warm in there. I was shivering from all the rain and being in the queue was a nice break from the cold. I know there are some that are very disappointed that the land only has one ride, but Super Nintendo World has so many fun interactive elements to it. I really don't think it suffers from lack of rides. You have four key challenges plus Shadow Showdown and the question mark blocks that you can collect coins from. There's just so much to explore and do. Getting there early is a must if you want to experience short lines. The key challenges can get some really long lines, although I did notice that the Swamp Panel Panic Challenge usually had a short line, much shorter than the other ones. I think it's because it's in sight and so a lot of people might not see it at first and if they haven't done a research they might not know that it's there. So that's one that you could do over and over again is to get into the Shadow Showdown. You only need to do three. Uh, it doesn't matter if the, it's all the same one. It still counts as a key challenge that you've completed because each time you do a key challenge, it does get harder. The land even has some binoculars up on a second level that uh, you can collect stamps. You can also receive a hidden key after you've completed the Shadow Showdown. And if you zoom in on certain characters or certain things, you get stamps. We also ate at Toadstool Cafe. The first few hours you could get right in, but we decided to wait. By the time we waited, they had cards that were, they were handing out to people. There was 15 minutes in between, like ours was 10.30 to 10.45. So we, we waited for that time. Once we returned to Toadstool Cafe, uh, the line was much longer. I realized I should have waited in line at least 10 minutes before my wait time because the line was out the doors and it took us that long or more to actually get to the team member that was standing at the doors. So my advice would be if there's someone handing out cards with wait times on them to return, if you see the line going out the door, you should get in line because it may take that much longer, even if you have a few minutes before your time. Toadstool Cafe is a must. I love the little toads that were running around in the little videos on the walls. And the food is really good too. You go and you order at the counter and then they give you a tray with your drinks and a team member will show you to a table. Then they will bring out the food to you. Now I will be going over the food in a different video. Now the rain was miserable. I was cold and wet all day, but we stayed despite that. And although I was cold and it just kept raining, I still had a fun time and can definitely recommend going to Super Nintendo World. My kids are gonna love it and I can't wait for them to see it. If you have kids, they will love it too. And so will you. I will have more videos about Universal Studios Hollywood in the future, so be on the lookout for those. Unfortunately, all my B-roll will have rain in it, but at least I have footage, right? Make sure to like the video, comment, share, and tell me if you've been to Super Nintendo World or if you plan on going or if you're just waiting for Epic Universe before you go and experience Super Nintendo World. Please do subscribe so you can get more video like this. With that being said, have a great day.